This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, I'm Dr. Deepak Meghur. In today's case, let's try to find out whether can we save the bag in this eye with extreme zonular weakness. This is an elderly lady who has long-standing hypermature morgagnin cataract with faculitic glaucoma. The pressures are controlled and now she's come for surgery. The capsule shows multiple areas of calcific spots. There is mild phacodonosis and the hard morgagnin small nucleus is settled down which is surrounded by a pool of uh, liquid cortex. In this case of long-standing hypermature cataract, I expect profound zonular weakness and the challenge is going to be to deal with these weak zonules and whether we'll be successful in saving the bag. The surgery is being performed under post-receptinance anesthesia. 1 ml of lignocaine is injected in the inferomedial quadrant. And I realize that the patient has got a significant pre-existing with the rural stigmatism. So I shift my position from the usual temporal location to the superior location to counter the pre-existing with the rural stigmatism. I have stabilized the globe with a globe stabilizer and I am using a transconjunctival technique to create a scleral tunnel of about 6 mm in size. The one problem which I notice with transconjunctival scleral tunneling is that the bleeding is continuous and will be quite severe. So we need to have some sort of an irrigation to ensure that visualization is not hampered. And in situations where we have a collection of fluid or pooling of fluid, we also need to have an additional suction mechanism to ensure that uh, the visualization is kept clear. So that is one aspect which is bothering me when I'm trying to do with the transconjunctival scleral tunnel. Otherwise, it works great. Once the capsule is stained, OVD is injected into the eye to deepen it and I'm injecting OVD in the scleral tunnel to delineate its extent and we can clearly see the nice inner lip which is concave and parallel to the limbus and this is how it has to be. I'm using a 2.8 millimeter to enter and it will be pointing at the end of the inner lip and then I'll be entering inside. I'm not making a total extension, I'm just extending a little bit so that I can pass some instruments to perform rexus. Okay, this is the moment which is going to let me know how the zonules are. And we can see multiple folds in the anticapsule suggesting I think profound zonular weakness in this eye. And immediately the loose cortex comes out. So time to deal with it, irrigate out the loose cortex so that we have good visualization and then let's plan accordingly. The first thing which I'm going to do is to inject cohesive OED that is sodium hyaluronate into the bag and also in the antechamber. The idea of inflating it into the bag is that it will provide some sort of a stability to the bag, keep it formed and maybe provide some traction force for us to ease out the rexus making process. So filling the bag with high molecular weight viscoelastic is probably going to help me. Uh, that's what I'm thinking now. So in eyes with loose zonules, capsurexus forceps is the best tool to manage the rexus. So I've gone in with my capsurexus forceps holding the flap and trying to tear it. And the enormous zonular laxity is seen here. Multiple folds are there. Even the tearing is not easy. Somehow I could manage to tear until I go and hit this roadblock and this is this calcific spot and this is not looking good here. It is threatening to go into the equator if I proceed further. So I'm just wondering what to do. I just leave it at that, come out, refill the bag with OVD. Uh, let me pause here for a moment and uh, let you know what was going in through my head at that point. Now I wanted to stabilize the bag before completing the rexus. I wanted to insert the CTR itself. Or the second option would be to enlarge the rexus from the other end. So these are the two options which my mind was dwelling into. The first option of inserting the CTR into the bag was a good one uh, because it would really help the bag to get back its stability. The ring would act as an artificial zonule. Then I could complete my rexus with greater ease. 
and without causing much more uh, damage to the already compromised zonules but there was one important issue or difficulty with this situation during the insertion of ctr this weak zone could give way and extend up to the periphery because the ring could tug at this weak area and this is has a propensity to extend out and i could lose the rexis so that was one issue which really uh, made me think otherwise and i chose the second option the second option was just to make a nick at the other side of the capsule opening and then try to extend it and this one i'm trying to do it as i reach this weak area again i can't get through this so using micro forceps to the left hand and a micro scissors to the right hand i'm going to give a small nick and we have an opening here the rest of the capsule again needs to be trimmed a tangential cut is given and with very carefully the enlargement of the rexus is done so i have some sort of a semblance of a rexus now before prolapsing the nucleus out of the bag i wanted to enlarge the incision and as i'm trying to enlarge the scleral tunnel incision i can see that the inferior part of the bag has really come out in the sense the localized zonular dehiscence is very well seen now the capsular fornix has come anteriorly and folded so i'm using sodium hyaluronate to fill into the bag and it pushes the fornix back again posteriorly and now i need to fix this bag before removing the nucleus out otherwise it's more likely that i'm going to lose the bag that was a challenge here i push in more cohesive ovd just to keep the bag formed and the chamber also formed and this is the time for me to insert the ctr it took a couple of attempts for me to pass the ctr under the enter capsule eventually the ring could be passed into the capsular bag and important for me to ensure that the ring is rotated and situated in the right plane so that the ring supports the weak area so i could achieve that so once the ring gets into the bag it gives tremendous confidence for us to deal with the nucleus or other steps of the surgery as i'm trying to mobilize the nucleus out of the bag we can see that the inferior portion of the bag which is trying to come out is looks very stable and it doesn't protrude out and the nucleus comes out very effortlessly using a vectus in the dialer the nucleus is expressed out using the phaco sandwich technique there was a moment of scare for me as i'm seeing a oval delineated mark in the posterior capsule is wondering whether pc is intact but thankfully the pc was intact that ring was in fact an area of uh, calcific zone in the posterior capsule and uh, pc was just fine the foldable intraocular lens was again planned this is an originally planned multi piece lens it's gently implanted into the back again the presence of a uh, sodium hyaluronate helps us to do all these things in a more gentle way there is no loss of the anterior chamber or loss of the back during the implantation of the lens or the maneuvering of the lens into the bag as i'm trying to remove the ovd both in front and behind the lens i can see a few cortex fibers which are sticking out of the posterior capsule i just try to carefully tease them out of the fornix i lift the lens and irrigate the ovd which is behind the lens one need to be mindful that you know we can develop some positive pressure because of fluid misdirection in these eyes with zonular weakness because the fluid can traverse behind but anyway thankfully uh, things are looking very well and uh, i'm using diluted tramsilone acetate just to check for any prolapse of vitreous through the loose zonules thankfully there is done we can see that the tramsilone has migrated into the burgers space suggesting a free access for the fluid from the anterior chamber to something behind the lens as well uh, that's it the case is done the ports are hydrated and these are the pictures of the first post op day the cornea is fine very minimal inflammation this is the incision patient had a good vision let's look back and identify certain key aspects of the surgery here which helped us to give an uh, a reasonably good outcome in this complex case okay this was a case with profound zonular weakness which was very much evident from the moment i touched the capsule even while tearing we could see enormous areas wrinkling of the anterior capsule suggesting the massive amount of loose zonules i think the most important step was trying to keep the bag very well filled with sodium hyaluronate which is a good cohesive ovd which helps us to maintain the space here 
So in an eye with such compromise zonules, when you're trying to tear the capsule and the, it's an empty bag, there is always a chance or more likelihood that the bag tends to collapse because there's no support and also both the anterior and the posterior zonules are weak in this situation. So I could buy some time by using this cohesive OVD. The second aspect was to stop the rexus once I reached this difficult area where it was not going ahead and instead try to enlarge the capsulotomy from the other area. And having done this, obviously the next most important step was to immediately insert the CTR to deal with this large area of inferior zonular dehiscence here. Again, using a cohesive OVD to keep the bag inflated when I'm trying to put in this ring did help me. Mind you, all these bags in the capsule will be very fragile. Uh, they have a great tendency to tear during the slightest of manipulation. When you're trying to introduce the CTR, even that can tear the rexus margin or the PC tear as well. So keeping the bag very well inflated with cohesive OVD was one of the secrets wherein the all the steps could be done more efficiently. And once the bag got stabilized, the prolapsing the nucleus out was easier. If I tried to prolapse the nucleus out without putting in the ring, the chances of losing the bag would be enormously increased. So using the right OVD and timely insertion of CTR really helped us to save the case and to save the bag. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.